So you're looking for a new budget graphics card? Well, look elsewhere, because this is the RTX 2080. This is actually one of the cheapest um, third-party uh, alternatives out there. But regardless, it's $800, guys. In this video, we, we, we're gonna try and test the cooler at least. It's called the Windforce 3X, and it features uh, 380 millimeter fans and they spin in the opposite directions to avoid turbulence a lot of technical shenanigans but as always got you covered guys let's dig into it so hey how is it going guys robin here on chips entertainment bring you the best tips and tools for gaming on the channel you'll find pc components tech gadgets and console accessories as well as product reviews and unboxings such as these ones if you're interested in that you gotta subscribe right and you don't wanna forget the notification bell either now in this video Video. We're gonna test the Gigabyte RTX 2080. This one, more specifically, is it any good? Or even more importantly, is it worth it? The fast answer is no <laughs> you probably could have guessed that anyway let's jump into the video so we have covered the unboxing and we have also looked at various benchmark results in a huge bunch of different games i'll link those videos up down below for you guys also at any time in this video don't forget to check out the links down below i want to focus on the performance between the gtx 10 80 ti and the slightly more expensive rtx 2080 both these cards line up right next to each other on amazon in terms of price well not exactly the gtx 1080 ti is actually cheaper so then what is the point of spending more money for something that can be done for a cheaper price there needs to be more value right otherwise it wouldn't make any sense at all now what I can say right off the bat, there is noticeable coil wine on my particular card. I've tried my best to force scenarios where this can happen, such as in menus and games where there isn't any frame limitation. But yeah, as soon as you jump into the game, the whining stops. So, uh, but yeah, but just something you need to be aware of. Speaking about the card and the cooler, it takes up two slots in your case, and the cooler is actually really good. There's 382 millimeter fans blowing at the uh, um, somewhat massive heatsink together with what looks to be thermal pads on each memory module and they are doing a terrific job of keeping the card cool and quiet and during my testing i never saw higher numbers than 80 celsius max which is actually quite good for this generation when i saw the 80 celsius number for example i was running benchmarks such as heaven and i was also playing some witcher 3 which is uh, known for being very graphic intense however keep in mind i'm using a corsair crystal 460x with three fans in the front so there's quite a lot of ventilation going on here as well now during idle when the system wasn't busy fans weren't spinning either now what about the fans then did they ever become noisy well let's have a listen the Windforce 3X cooling system features a triple 82mm fan setup with alternating spinning. We got 8 composite copper heat pipes that got direct contact and 3D active fan functionality. So let's talk about the alternating spinning for a second. It's basically a solution to prevent the turbulent airflow of having 3 fans. Since the fans rotate in the same direction, the airflow direction is opposite between the fans which will cause turbulent airflow and reduce dissipation efficiency. Gigabyte have solved this by turning the middle fan in the opposite direction, so that the airflow direction between the two fans is the same, reduces the turbulence and enhancing the airflow pressure. Also, if we flip the card, there is a metal plate as well, which is very nice and it keeps the card from having and experience the sagginess effect, which also always makes me so sad to see so this is also very nice but keep in mind it's an $800 graphics card so I mean I mean thank god they actually attached the back plates 
I guess. Now, regarding overclocking, I have been playing with EVGA's Precision X1 a bit. And yeah, there is some extra performance to take out of these cards. I was able to overclock the core with about 130 MHz and memory even more. I will not be covering the overclocking in this video. But if you want me to take a look at it, guys, I will make a separate video instead. But let's talk games now. And yeah, let's start by throwing in the benchmarks right away as I'm speaking and begin to try and summarize the experience. Yes, I was able to max out both Forza Horizon 4 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider and basically achieve the magic 60 frames per second golden number. But you can do that with the GTX 1080 Ti as well. So this really puts the 2080 card in a very awkward position because in raw rasterized performance so to speak it performs similar to a graphics card that is 2 years old and almost $100 cheaper. Now we have to look beyond the raw performance and what the RTX brings here are some really cool new features but it's something that we're still yet to test and experience and that makes this a bad purchase plain simple considering how much cash you actually have to burn and still not get that much better raw performance now what nvidia promises will be worth the money is what they like to call a dlss which is a smarter anti aliasing basically and also we got ray tracing of course that we don't even know anything about in terms how it will perform at all since they haven't really allowed us to test it that's right shadow of the tomb raider was supposed to get the patch they implemented ray tracing but that was delayed for some reason and to make things look even worse battlefield 5 the nvidia is promising great ray tracing compatibility is also yet to be released in fact there's not a single game out that supports this even though the cards are now being released now i wonder could this all just be a coincidence of course not ray tracing is not ready for the market and nvidia knows about this and they are actually postponing the release of the rtx 2080 ti for a second time now and this is part of the reason believe it or not developers knows this i mean it's getting kind of ridiculous at this point it's like they are rushing their own releases here and it's not like they are competing with amd here either because there's not even any competition this to me is just stupidity have some respect for your consumers for crying out loud i mean what are we doing here do they actually think that we will purchase these cards based on hype alone i mean ray tracing isn't ready but the cards are here you go enjoy your all new ray tracing thousand dollar graphics card and play some non-supported ray tracing games on it at this point guys my brain is about to explode and sign out completely now in terms of raw rasterized gaming performance because that is unfortunately the only thing that we can test as of right now is a disappointment i made videos where i've tested performance in various titles rumors are also saying that the rtx 2080 is gonna be unable to handle ray tracing in 4k resolution in acceptable frame rate and that you basically have to scale back to 1080p res if you don't want to be looking at freezing frames so as much as nvidia keeps saying that ray tracing is the coolest thing that ever happened to the gaming industry for 800 dollars or even a thousand dollars i simply cannot recommend this to anyone it's way too expensive it's way overpriced by nvidia and it's not even ready to be launched to begin with and if you're looking for a new graphics card and don't know what to look for I would say that the GTX 1060 is a brilliant card and in most cases it will suit you just fine. AMD has some great cards as well, I'll link them up down below. In most cases you will be fine here for 1080p gaming. If you're on the other hand is 
looking to take the big leap over to 4k and you have a little bit more cash to spend here the gtx 1080 or the, the 1080 ti are great for that the gtx 1080 ti especially will handle most games in 4k around the magic 60 frames golden mark so conclusion time is the rtx just a scam then i'd say almost i think nvidia will get this right eventually but my hopes of seeing ray tracing in games in 4k with this generation is almost none at all i think that the 2000 series is simply not powerful enough to make this happen and on top of that i think they're gonna need more time to polish these new features as well and so perhaps when the next generation comes out things will be more stabilized and standardized so to speak and there will be games to test that time and ultimately we will know how the card will perform in the area i'm not that convinced that ray tracing will be worth the performance impact on these cards and so it makes the rtx card kind of pointless if you're not counting deep learning super sampling which we haven't seen too much about either but i would love to hear what you guys have to say here so please share your thoughts in the comments now that's it for me guys now i want to know what graphics cards you're playing on right now and what do you think of nvidia's pricing on this generation it kind of feels like they completely understand the high demand market and basically responding by one pointing the fingers and two selling these new cards for as much money as they can at the moment i don't think this is cool in any way we really have to think about this even once and twice before purchasing because supporting these high prices is completely Iotic, in my opinion, Nvidia wants to get rid of their overstock of older Pascal and therefore not dropping the prices on their older graphics card because then they wouldn't sell any RTX cards at all. Think about it. Anyway, that's just my two cents, guys. Oh well, that's gotta cut it for me this time. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, have an awesome day, alright? Bye.